Good morning. This is Bill from Audi Europa on a lovely bird-free, rooster-free morning. Uh, it's not even that humid outside, which is quite nice. And uh, nobody else is around, which even to me is just the cherry on top. It's, it's very nice to be here kind of quiet and alone and chipper and cheerful uh, before other people just start dragging me down, which they're sure to do. And uh, I can have a lovely morning of coffee and, uh, you know, quietness all to myself. Uh, also to myself uh, this morning, I have this 2004 Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG Roadster. This is a pretty neat car. Uh, obviously, I've always, uh, always been a fan of these R230 cars. That's the internal designation for this generation of SL. Uh, came out uh, in North America in 2003, uh, ran through, I want to say 2012, and was a bit of an institution, a big design change from Mercedes. It dragged the SL uh, really into the modern era. Uh, it replaced the R129, which had run for a very long time. It went from the uh, very famous sort of uh, concealed soft top, bolt on hard top system to a true folding hard top, uh, which followed uh, the original SLK. Uh, it also launched the SL into what I call supercar territory. I get a lot of flack for saying that uh, about the standard, you know, SL500. But there's no way anyone's going to give me flack for the SL55. I mean, this thing was designed by Mercedes and the nuts at AMG to compete with the 911 Turbo, the Ferrari F430. Uh, they gave it true supercar statistics, uh, you know, for frankly a pretty good price tag by comparison. I mean, obviously the thing was, I don't know what the base price on the 55 was 120 grand and the options took it up from there. So definitely not an affordable car for most people, uh, but uh, compared to its competition, it was pretty damn good. Uh, now this is a Designio edition, and there's some argument as to how that is pronounced, at least amongst uh, Mercedes people. Some people say Designo, which to me sounds absolutely ridiculous, like some sort of birthday clown, uh, which, you know, birthday clowns, if you don't find them creepy, then, you know, I don't know what the hell's the matter with you. To me, there's just nothing creepier than a birthday clown. Uh, I pronounce it Designio. And I, I believe that is the correct pronunciation. I mean, it's essentially an Italian thing. And, uh, you know, I just don't see the Italian saying designo. Uh, anyway, it's the Espresso Limited Edition. That means outside it has uh, what they call black mocha paint. Uh, inside it has uh, designo sand beige leather, which we'll get into in a minute. And it takes the, you know, it takes the SL up to a level of exclusivity and uh, fit and finish that's really befitting uh, of a car of this uh, price tag. You know, a lot of these things are very Teutonic. They're silver, black, they're, you know, just sort of quiet, big missiles, and, and they don't really make an impact. They don't have the, you know, for instance, the same soft leather you'd find in a Jaguar or the crazy amount of uh, exterior interior options you can get in a Porsche. They're just, you know, a real purpose-built machine. When you start factoring in the Designio stuff, it becomes a lot more uh, tailor-made to the tastes of, you know, any given individual who wants to spend a lot of money on a car. And you get some pretty damn neat color combos. Uh, for instance, this Designio Mocha, it has way more metal flake than your uh, average Mercedes-Benz paint job and goes through a much more extensive paint process. And the end result is stunning. Uh, you know, at midnight, the thing looks black. It's, you know, just a black car. Uh, you put the sun right over the top of it and it just absolutely sparkles in the most beautiful way. Uh, you see the hint of brown paint uh, in the black and it just becomes something, you know, beyond your normal paint job without being in your face because, of course, these are, you know, pretty conservative Germans putting this thing together. And, of course, the inside receives uh, a beautiful treatment that changes out a lot of the uh, MB Tech's covering with uh, proper, true, you know, handcrafted leather. Uh, the design of the 230 is lovely. Uh, you know, it's got that beautiful curved greenhouse, the long sleek front end, uh, the little stubby tail. Uh, the AMG versions, you know, very pretty. Add some stuff like that low front air dam with the mesh in it, uh, some enhanced rocker panels. Of course, giant 18-inch uh, five-star alloys, 
beautiful uh, twice pipes AMG exhaust at the back and just gives it a gorgeous look. You also see that intercooler up front, which is kind of neat. Actually, that could be a trans cooler, uh, though it is an intercooled supercharged engine. Uh, this one does have some nice options beyond the... Um, uh, beyond the uh, Desenio, you can see that sort of solid plastic looking uh, front star, which is different from most of them you'll see. Uh, that is the uh, radar based uh, cruise control uh, that will, you know, sort of maintain the distance to the car in front of you. Uh, very, very nice feature, expensive, and nice to have on this car. And go inside it. So you also get keyless go, which means to open it, I can just put my hand on the uh, door and it's going to pop it open. Love the AMG badge. AMG, I can't remember the German name. Well, I can, it just I can't pronounce it. But uh, essentially it stands for the two guys who started AMG in the town they lived in. Anyway, back here, uh, you get pretty nice trunk room for a two-seat Roadster. Uh, with the top up like this, you can move that partition forward. You can lay a set of golf clubs back there. You can put anything you want back there. Uh, you know, stuff an infant, a toddler, a basset hound, whatever you need to carry in the trunk so it doesn't annoy you up front. And that's, uh, that's a pretty nice size to do it in a small two-seat Roadster. Uh, you can see it has the original Desenio floor mats. They're branded, badge, special, different from the rest and uh, all pretty lovely back there. You also get these kind of very cool uh, LED AMG taillights, which had this uh, tinted part in the middle that sort of separated them from the, uh, from the standard taillights on these cars. And of course, that beautiful AMG exhaust down there. Have a look under the hood. And I'll say something about this particular car. Uh, it really is a standout among standouts. Sometimes you get a car in that's just so damn clean, uh, you know that the guy who owned it was a real irritating SOB. Okay, under the hood, it is stellar and mint and show ready. Uh, here is that big 5.5-liter uh, supercharged V8. Uh, it's the same engine, basically, that went in the 500, but with a lot of tweaks by AMG, and not just the bolt-on supercharger, that screw-type thing. Uh, you know, they worked the heads, they worked the... Uh, uh, compression, they changed quite a bit about the tuning on the engine to bump it all the way up to 493 horsepower, you know, more than 100 horsepower where it came fast, significantly more, over 500 pound feet of torque. And it turns this, you know, already potent SL uh, into a bit of a fire breathing dragon. I mean, this thing is just awesome. Uh, every AMG engine is signed by the person who put it together. Hopefully, Betty Rodriguez put this one together for us. Uh, she does a lot of our cars. And uh, anyway, you can just see the sort of pride and craftsmanship that goes into this thing. Uh, beautiful, beautiful car under the hood. Uh, you see the little sensors running to the struts. That's part of that ABC Sport suspension. Uh, you can also see kind of a small battery up here. Uh, this is the starter battery. Uh, it also has a house battery in the back that runs the uh, convenience feature. So a little bit like a motorhome in that regard. Uses two different batteries to keep the stress off just one. I also like seeing a Mercedes battery in there because I think that shows a guy uh, who would spend too much money on his battery uh, would also keep his oil changed, his brakes nice, and his tires uh, up to date. So anyway, show ready under the hood of this car. Now, if you look behind those big uh, AMG alloys there, uh, you'll see brake discs in excess of 14 inches, uh, vented, eight piston calipers, absolutely a uh, set of manhole covers back there. And they need to be. I mean, this is not a light car. So, I mean, if you want to have performance braking on it, you really have to have some big ass brakes. Uh, you know, it's what, 4,400 pounds or something? Even heavier than the standard SL500 because they had to use steel in a couple of places where they otherwise would have used aluminum to keep the weight down. But with all the torque of that supercharged V8, they needed it stronger. Uh, in the back, also vented discs with, uh, uh, you know, a size bigger than 13 inches. So, uh, you know, again, very, very big brakes on this thing. Pretty cool and uh, pretty fresh tires on there as well. 
inside, here's that beautiful Dizinho stuff coming into play. You see it's got pretty much black trim, carpet, uh, door panels, all that stuff everywhere. With this lovely cream beige, or ah, that's more of a saddle tan, I guess. Uh, you know, stitched in with very special wood. And that is what this Dizinho stuff is all about, is using uh, very expensive, upgraded, special materials over the standard car. And I believe this was an $8,000 option in this thing. Uh, so, you know, it would have put the sticker price up in the $130,000 range, especially when you add in Distronic Cruise, Dynamic Seats, Keyless Go. Uh, this thing would have been a pretty pricey machine. Uh, the fit and finish, unparalleled. Uh, uh, you can see again here this is beautiful hand stitched leather you don't get that on the standard sl pop that open you get a nine mil in there you might even get a little uh, 357 revolver or something so you could pretty good firepower uh, it's got bose sound you see that big speaker there uh, here's uh, your 52-way power seats with heating and memory uh, all very nice stuff beautiful designio leather on this uh, seat here you see the amg badge on it uh, press that little guy, it'll move the seat forward for you and uh, you get access to the back where you're going to find even more stitched leather and you know beautiful materials than you do uh, in the uh, standard version. Tell you what, we'll get the top down so you get a better look in there. To do that I'm going to hop in, I'm gonna fire it up, foot on the brake, tap that guy. That big supercharged 8 comes to life with a roar. Uh, another card telling me to check the key battery. That's wonderful. Uh, if we want to run the top, I can pull this big flapper guy here. Uh, pull it back a little bit gently. You can see the uh, trunk comes up from the front. Down go the windows and this beautiful aluminum hardtop folds very quickly into place. Fast enough to be used at a traffic light. Awesome. That quick, that uh, fast, and that nice. Let's put the windows down and see where we're at. So anyway, back here, uh, you can see again the beautiful uh, stuff that you get with the Dizinio that you don't get with the other ones. Leather even here, here, all that's MB Techs on the standard version, which is quite nice, but just better here. Uh, on the package shelf, if you want to strap down some cargo, like again, your toddler, your infant, or your basset hound, you just stuff them across that run and put this weird little cargo seat belt over the top of them, and that'll cinch them into place. Let's hop back in, go for a drive. Probably put the uh, hard top back up to cut the wind down. And yeah, we'll decide in a minute. God, I just love starting this car up. It sounds so sinister. Okay, here you see a special AMG instrument cluster. It's got white face gauges, which are a little weird to read, but uh, differentiated from the standard version. Nice to look at as well. Uh, you've got this sort of uh, instrument cluster that I've never really been fond of in this generation SL. Uh, to me, it looks like the Sydney Opera House or uh, the one used to get on the old Alfa Romeos. Some people corrected me on that. There's some, obviously it's anti-glare, but apparently there's some historical tradition for it uh, in Mercedes that I forgot about. I don't care, I'm not a big fan, uh, but obviously it's fine. Uh, it gets the point across. With the Dizinio, you also get the sort of neat special, you know, leather stitched on top of it. Uh, this is all real leather on the dashboard, uh, whereas on the uh, standard cars, that's MB Tex. Uh, here's a very nice sport uh, AMG steering wheel. Uh, you see the minus and plus on it. That means it's got little flippity paddles behind it. Uh, you could use uh, these buttons here to run through the uh, multi-function stuff. Uh, the little display there. And what do we have? No malfunctions. That's nice. And uh, just 35,000 miles. Uh, also, of course, the AMG logo on the gauges with the uh, V8 compressor. Over there, you've got your automatic headlights. Uh, you know, you've got an instrument yeah, you know, it's fine, this stuff. This is the uh, climate control stuff. Uh, down here, you've got your command unit. A little bit vintage at this point, but it's fine. Uh, gives you your radio navigation, that sort of thing. Uh, no go on uh, 
Bluetooth on this year, I wouldn't think. Uh, apparently, though, it does have satellite radio, which is kind of a, uh, another nice, expensive option in 2004. Beautiful wood, again, special to the Dizinho stuff. They don't use this wood in the standard SLs. This is all because of this package. Uh, you know, beautiful wooden leather shifter, uh, keyless go button there. Uh, you've got a three-way uh, transmission setting, manual, uh, comfort or standard, all very nice. Here's your uh, Distronic Cruise Control. Uh, that'll vary the distance between the car in front of you, um, less, more, and uh, you can, you know, that's nice because there's so many nitwits on the highway who can't seem to maintain a speed. It absolutely drives me nuts. One minute they're going 75, then they're going 83, then they're going 92, then they're going 68, and you're just back behind them going, what the f <sighs> You know, set your cruise. And uh, it's nice when you can just leave your cruise to do the uh, driving for you and keep the right distance. <clears throat> uh, this is ABC Sports Suspension Active Body Control. Uh, that's a very advanced suspension system that replaces standard coilovers. Doesn't have any sway bars on this car or coilover springs. Uh, instead, it uses fluid dampening to uh, pump up each individual strut as needed. So you hit the brakes hard, it'll pump up the front to keep the body level, you hammer it, pump up the back to keep it level, ditto side to side, fantastic system. Uh, and you also, of course, get the, um, uh, you can see ABC car being raised. So uh, let's say you're loading this car on a truck or you're, uh, you know, going over a big speed bump. You can have two different heights by pressing this guy here a little bit and a lot and uh, turn this thing into a 4x4, four four, uh, enable, uh, sorry, in order to get better ground clearance, but also look semi that way, so we'll get it back down. Uh, you got some cup holders here that are still working, apparently. Nice stuff, good place for your Perrier. Uh, over here, you've got a nice set of books and such. Uh, inside the uh, glove box, if I want to run up the roll bar, there's a little switch down here that lets me do that. Uh, that thing comes up uh, automatically in the event of a collision, uh, or you can also raise and lower it manually if you want to get that sort of roll bar look to the car, which frankly I've never liked, but some people do. Okay, to put the top back down, you press on this flapper here. Uh, you see now the trunk uh, is going to come up again from the reverse. Up's going to come that uh, little flap and our lovely fast-moving aluminum hardtop. Windows go up, trunk goes down, fast as hell, all very nice. And uh, again, part of the uh, Dizinho, you get this beautiful Alcantara headliner, gorgeous to look at. Let's go for a spin. Now, one of my favorite uh, automotive journalists ever, a guy named Chaba Chair, I'm not very good at pronouncing his name, I hope that's it, compared these cars to Duesenberg's. Uh, you know, he said what they, you know, the special version of an already expensive car, the supercharger, the high price tag, uh, the hedonism, the no holds barred, you know, high horsepower, um, and, you know, practicality is out the window. It's just not the point of this thing at all. Uh, and is designed to bring you from point A to point B in incredible style and comfort uh, with incredible uh, mechanical performance, you know, a suspension feel all of it uh, all meant to just pamper the driver with whatever he wants and uh, I respect that I agree with them I do believe these uh, you know are not dissimilar to the Duesenbergs of old I also think they're going to be very collectible I mean you just feel the potency under the hood of this thing you really really do Again, 500 plus uh, pound-feet of torque on tap, so give it a little hammer. <laughs> oh, Lord, that was nice. Uh, what that did was kick on the traction control, which of course you could turn off, but uh, the Mercedes traction control is a bit too much of a nanny. Uh, what it likes to do is kick itself back on if it thinks you're losing it, so it's not a very trusting traction control. But uh, anyway, with it off, you could get a little bit more wheel spin out of it. And you just saw the instant power from this thing. I mean, you hammer it, it throws you back. We're talking quarter mile times in the 13s, uh, zero to 60 in the fours. This thing is fast. 
and it handles for a big heavy car but a wheel spin. Wow. Man, and does it just pull you up through the uh, uh, through the gears, throws your head back. It's a monster, this thing. Uh, Five-speed automatic, uh, bulletproof thing to handle the torque on it. And uh, man, are you going to enjoy driving this car to work. And they are an absolute bargain, a bargain in the supercar world. I mean, this thing, again, $130,000 plus vehicle, uh, can be had in the 20 grand range with miles in the 30s and all the handcrafted leather, you know, maintenance. Yeah, sure. You know, you don't own a Toyota Corolla. It's not going to be, uh, you know, the cheapest car to maintain. But, uh, you know, for what it is, try maintaining a, you know, Maserati or, you know, an F430. It's going to be more. And this thing gives you uh, not dissimilar performance for significantly less opening money and significantly less maintenance money. So uh, it really is a terrific bargain in the car world. You keep this thing nice, keep it in the garage, polished up, maintained. Uh, there'll be a time when uh, it really does go up in value. So anyway, there it is, 2004 Mercedes-Benz SL55 Designio, uh, 35,000 miles, stunning car, Designio Espresso Edition. Uh, very, very interesting future collectible in my mind. I'm going to hammer it again, but the street's just too tight. Uh, if you have an interest, give us a call, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.